today we're going to be making bourbon and when I say making bourbon we're going to be finishing the process of making bourbon. You can't operate a still in Texas uh, without a license and all that good stuff. What we are able to do is buy Buffalo Trace Mash Bill number one White Dog. White Dog is what goes into the barrel and becomes bourbon. Uh, so there's two requirements for bourbon, actually three. One, it's got to be made in the United States. It's the only truly U.S. Uh, spirit. Second, it's got to be made of 51% corn. So Mash Bill number one is 51% corn, barley, and rye. The third requirement for something to be called bourbon is it has to be aged in a brand new white oak charred barrel. I'd like to introduce you to my smoking hot wife, Cher. Say hi, Cher. Hi, Cher. Uh, she's going to be helping me cut this uh, white dog down from about 125 proof down to 100 proof. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it's a smaller barrel. These can age up to 10 to 12 times faster in a small barrel because there's more wood to, to liquid ratio. Uh, last time I tried this on a small mini barrel like this, I put it in straight without cutting it, left it in too long. Uh, the angels got most of it, but the little bit I had left was essentially rocket fuel, and we're not going to do that again. So this I will be tasting every week and measuring the alcohol content. I'm hoping to harvest it at about 117, 118, hopefully with a nice uh, oak finish. This barrel has number three to number four charring on the inside. That means it's heavily charred and has a little bit of an alligator pattern to it. So we're hoping some good things will come from this. Uh, wish us luck. We're going to start by testing the proof of the white dog by itself just to make sure I'm confident in Buffalo Trace's quality standards, but we're going to go ahead and check it one time. Then my lovely smoking hot wife share is going to fill to this little mark that I've already pre-measured because I had to do some math that I'll post right here, uh, the formula for figuring how much you have to cut it to get it to 100. Okay, here we go. We're going to open our first bottle and pour it in our mixing vessel. Did I get that open? There we go. So we're going to pour that right in there. And we're going to keep these bottles to hopefully re relabel and rebottle it as woodshed bourbon available. I can't sell it, but I'll give it away. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill our beaker up to this blue marker right here. Messy. I think I got extra. Okay, now we have our hydrometer right here. This should register about 120, between 120 and 130 proof. They're not that accurate for this little hobby here. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on that. Okay, what does that say? What's that say, Cher? What's, where, where are we looking at it? Right here on the side. What's that say right there? 120. So it's bobbing around 120. 125, so give or take three, four percent, it's probably close enough. Now we're going to pour this back into the beaker or to the container, and then my smoking hot wife assistant is going to add some distilled water in this container. We're going to mix it up. We're going to test the alcohol again to see if it's close to 100. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to add our water. Give it a stir. We're back in our beaker. Now, if this was a lab setting, I'd clean this out again. We're just making bourbon. More. More, more, more. More, more, give me more. Okay, let's see where we're at now. You have to ease these in here, because if you drop it in, we're in a risk of breaking it. There we go. What's our proof say now? See this P? Mm -hmm. That's the 100 mark. So it's right under that pee. Perfect. Now we're not going to do this with every bottle we pour in here. We were just showing how we reduce the proof to make it suitable for barreling over a good period of time to extract as much flavor from the barrel as possible. If I didn't do this, uh, I would have to harvest it in probably a week or two because the alcohol would make it undrinkable. Um, so we're going to pour, we're going to repeat this process till the barrel is full. We're going to shake up the barrel and then we're going to test it one more time to see if I need to add any more white dog or any more water to get this to exactly 100 proof. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our bung hole. Yes, this is called a bung hole right here. This is your bung hole. Put this back in here. And we will not be filtering this either. So it will be uncut, unfiltered. It will be unfiltered, not uncut. We're cutting it now. It likes it. It's drinking it up through the bunghole. 
Can I say bunghole again? Thank you. <laughs> All right. One down, and we're going to have probably about 10 more to go. Okay, we're done uh, filling our, our, our barrel here. Now, uh, I will share the exact measurements I had to use for this. I had to actually consult OpenAI to get the right portions. These bottles of White Dog come in at 125 proof. I wanted to cut it down to 100 proof. They're exactly 375 milliliters. So I set up a spreadsheet to do a bunch of math. Couldn't figure it out quick enough. So I just asked OpenAI, chat GPT. Lo and behold, it had the answer. So essentially I'm adding 93.75 uh, milliliters of water, distilled water. If you don't use distilled water, the, the minerals and tap water can throw off your readings with your hydrometer. So you have to use distilled water. Uh, so I did that with every, every bottle, every 375 milliliter bottle, I added about 93, 94 milliliters of water. I went ahead and uh, poured some into the beaker uh, after I shook it up and to test see for close to 100 proof across our fingers. If not, I'll have to add some more spirit. If not, I'll have to add some more water. So put that in there like that. Coming at that P. Look at that. Perfect. P for perfect. That's right. Right at 100 proof. So the good thing about that is it's going to give us some longer barrel time without the proof going up too high. The reason why the proof goes up higher as you barrel it or as it ages is because water molecules are smaller than alcohol molecules hmm. and they seep their way into the wood and evaporate to the outside. So over time you can fill this barrel up but by the time you get the juice out of it it may be three quarters full, half full, but if the flavor is right and the proof is correct then that doesn't matter. You made good bourbon. Um, we'll see how this turns out. Now I'm going to I'm going to test this every week uh, and I'm hoping for about a four month uh, aging time. That should simulate around 10 years, something like that. Um, any longer than that, I'd be afraid. We're going to put it out of my rick house, i.e. my shed, uh, to enjoy some of the summer heat and get this really cooking in here and getting a good flavors from this brand new white oak, white oak American charred barrel. Excellent. Was that a nice looking bunghole? <laughs> <laughs> All right, to fill this to fill this five liter barrel up, we used 11 375 milliliter bottles of white dog. And then, of course, with adding all the water and stuff like that, it almost came out perfect. I, I don't even have enough left over to put, it, put in here. Uh, so good shot there. They're about 11 to $12 each. So it's a little pricey experiment when you're ready. But, you know, what the heck. Uh, next time, if this works, then we'll go ahead and source the weeded mash bill uh, that they make Weller and Pappy with and, and try it with that. Won't that be awesome? That'll be great. All right. Thanks, thanks again to my smoking hot wife, Cher, for being my spokesmodel here. So... Uh, we got to hurry up because we're off to see my nephew Daniel's band, Nothing More, playing tonight at the Aztec. We're going to be rocking out. I think we see it right here. There we go. Nothing More. Ciao.